Today we're going to talk about a very important skill that will increase your bottom line no matter what. If you get better at this skill, you will make more money. Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today we're going to talk about researching the skills it takes to increase your profits. Most people just do one simple search either on comps for eBay or maybe on Terapeak, but there is so much more to searching and getting the right results and understanding what those results are. If you don't know how to properly research items, you're going to be leaving money on the table without a doubt all the time. So let's hop over to the screen and we're going to show you how to do the best research you can. So for researching, as you can see here, I have Terapeak opened up. I also have a completed listing page for the last 90 days on eBay, which is just regular completed listings. I also have just a sold page. I also have a active listings page, which just shows ones that are still active right this very second. I've opened up a pop psych since I'm going to talk about records for just a second here. And then I've also opened up Discogs. Now there's several more sites that I would use or could use if I needed to to find record prices on some rare discs. Now let's just say I wanted to find an Elvis Sun Records price for an Elvis Sun 45. Now you could narrow this search down more specific and add the disc number or the title of one of the songs, but in many cases that could limit your information that you're finding because some people may have not put that into the title of their listing, so hence it won't show up when you go to search for it. Another aspect on this is when you're looking up stuff out in the real world, what you want to know is the sell-through rate. You're going to look at the completed listings. Now, this is sell-through rate for the last 90 days because that's all that eBay ended listings does. Now, it's a lot harder to find a sell-through rate using Terapeak because it only shows you the solds. So you can figure it out from here as well. So you'll compare the total completed listings versus how many of those sold in the same time frame. Now to figure out a basic sell-through rate, you can just divide the total number into how many are there. It's basically 84, 85% of all Elvis Sun records sell. Very, very, very high rate of sell-through on this one. So that's one thing that you'll want to look at. You don't want to just look at how many of anything sold. Some people will only look at solds and say, this is all the information that I need. That's not the case. You can't determine exact price on many things just by looking at what sold. Because you may see 10 items that sold, but there may be three or 400 that didn't sell in that same time frame. So your sell-through rate may be just terrible on it. It may not be worth messing with. And you need to look at the live listing specifically as well. You may find only 10 or 20 items in the completed listings, maybe only 10 sold. But if you look at active, there may be 100 that somebody just put up. So there's a lot more to this. If there's a lot of something up now and it wasn't in the comps, this is a new change to that category. So that could drastically affect the price, even when you're looking at the comp sales on it. So that is just something you need to pay attention to. Looking at here, you can see the highest one on eBay in the last year only sold for $4,930. And that's for five of them. One single disc sold for 45 though. If we go to Pop Psych, we'll see different prices. Some of these are based on time frame that they've been up. So you'll have to take that into consideration as well. But you'll see some higher ones. If you sort these through by actual sale price or sale time, you'll get different results on it. So that's another thing you need to worry about. Now, if you're researching items and there's not many of them in there to find a price, even if I'm using Terapeak for 365 days, I could run upon something, a scarce item that only five show up for sale in the last year that sold through eBay. And that there's maybe only a couple at any given time that are in the comps or in the active. None of that information can lock down a price in my book. Many times I price things much higher than other folks do, and I'll sell them for that price a majority of the time. Now, you've got to know how to play this, and you've got to know how to read the data. If there's a couple hundred that sold in a small time frame, obviously that information is pretty solid. But you have to be able to strapulate out and understand the data that you're looking at. All of these 
pages that I have opened are key informations that I would use to price something if I wasn't aware of what something was worth. You can also add another level to this and use worth point if you so do wish. I have other boards and places that I use, especially for records. I've got three or four more sites as well as Reddit boards that I can use. Just because you can't find it on one of the platforms I have opened or one of the spots or sites I have opened doesn't mean that there aren't better sources or better ways to find this out also. You can go to some auction companies' pages like Heritage and things like that and figure out prices on some items as well based on what other things sold for. You don't necessarily have to even have a confirmed sale price at a specific model for it to work for you. Let's say you find two or three different items on Heritage that you can comparatively price on eBay at a specific price and another item on Heritage that you can't find anywhere else. You can use that variance between the price that Heritage may get for it and the price that eBay may get for it and leverage that other item that you can't figure out a price on. There's other ways to do this. Pricing by, say, like, like models. You have a postcard and you can't find out. It's for a bank, let's say, in one town. You can't find any bank postcards from that town, but you can find other postcards from the same time frame and from downtown from other buildings. You can price things that way as well. You just have to understand that some buildings, like a train depot, will almost always be higher than other buildings, say, like a hotel. So, and that goes for almost any category. Records are the same way. But without opening up and checking all of these specific spots, if you don't know what you're doing in some areas, you can be leaving a ton of money on the table. Now, I already know these items here. I know Elvis Sun Records by the back of my hand. I've had hundreds of them. They do show up fairly often. I can get a Sun Record almost any day of the week if I want to dig for it. So it just depends on the item that you are looking for. You have to know a little bit something about it. Once you learn more and more, just like anything else, you get better at it, and you may not have to use all of these sources. You may automatically know what a specific record sells for a specific book, a specific toy, a specific postcard or photo because you've sold them over and over and over and over again. But when you're first starting off, you have got to use all of the information out there. Now, this is a question I get a lot is, how do I price things? And this is what I started with. All of these, and as I said, with records, if it was scarce records, or I have no information in any of these places, or I have so very little information, I will use a couple more sites as well. And this goes for pretty much anything. There's glass sites, there's other platforms, there's many ways to figure out almost any price that you want out on the internet, even without paying for it. I do not pay for WorthPoint. I do pay for Pop Psych, though, because it is a good source for many different data. It goes back 10 or 15 years, and I like to see trending. You don't necessarily have to know trending at all, though. I'm heavy into records, so for me, I need that trending information. If you don't need trending, you may not even have to worry about Pop Psych. You can look 10 or 15 items, I think, for free every day of the week. So you don't even have to pay for some items. Price guides, in all honesty, would be my last source for pricing something. Just because something is listed as being worth this much in a book doesn't relate to what it would sell for online. That's a totally different story. Just like slabbed comics are a different story as well. Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter talks about comics. It's a love of mine as well. We all know how slabbed comics go. It's hard to judge sometimes the price on some of those comic books because of this factor. Some may go for some insane amount of money online, but be only worth half of that in the price guide. Postage stamps and coins can go the same way. So you've got to dig in and spend the time investing into proper research so you can get the prices better. So you can understand first that you need to know what the sell-through rate is for that category. You may not have to, though, know sell-through rate for a specific item. The category may be enough. I always use as well when I'm searching for something the least amount of information that I can get away with to start my search because you don't know what people would have put in the title. And if you're putting some words in there, it may eliminate things that will block out results that would help you. So you don't want to block out any results. So use as few keywords to search for what you need as possible. Elvis Sun 45 is all I need to find the basics on any Elvis record that's on the Sun label. That's all there is to this. You'll get better at it, I promise you. There'll be some little ins and ways to weasel around with the data and figure out what's important out of what you're looking at. Most people just look at it go, oh, there's a price, I'm done, by looking at Terapeak or by just looking at eBay comp sales. There's way more to it. 
I can price some things way over what I see. Sometimes the search results will show me that the prices that they sold for in the past were too high and my chances of selling it for that price may be almost nil. Just because you see something sell for a very high price doesn't mean it was worth that at all because again, I sell things for higher prices all the time. A one-off sale of something high does not mean anything at all. Good example of that are the Black Diamond Classic Disney VHS tapes where you see once in a blue moon somebody selling one of those for 4000 10000 15000 They're only worth a few bucks in all honesty. A lot of those sales are just bogus sales just trying to spike things up and don't mean anything as well. That's another aspect that you need to look at when you're looking for prices on these. You have to understand how all of this goes together. The last resort would be the price guide. As I said, that would be the least active one or the least relative to selling online. The best aspect of a price guide is if you find something that's high in the price guide, compare it to the online sales history. Like a record I can compare with Pop Psych and eBay comps as well as Terapeak. And if it's in line with a certain percentage lower or somewhere matching a price in the price guide, you can maybe strapulate out other prices from that variance between the difference in the price guide and the difference between eBay or Terapeak or PopPsych or WorthPoint or whatever site you're using. That's what you got to know. That's the experience that you should really be honing your skills on is knowing how to research properly, being able to read that information and not just pricing something by what everybody else does, but understanding which areas and how you can effectively price higher or lower to get better sales or quicker sales or whatever you want to do with your aspect of your business. But that's what I have for you today. Well, there you are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. What does a youngster look for in a Christmas toy? Fun. Excitement. What do you look for? Same thing, of course, plus something else. Call it value. Here's a brand new toy that has both. The new Texaco jet fuel truck. Looks just like the real trucks you see at airports. It's built big and rugged, so your youngster can ride on it. And an exclusive steering mechanism makes it the most maneuverable toy truck you've ever seen. It's hard to outgrow a toy that's as much fun as this. But what about value? Well, the Texaco jet fuel truck is built of heavy gauge steel and made with a beautiful eye for detail. Best of all, it costs $4.98, though it compares to trucks costing two and three times as much. Charge it on your Texaco credit card. It's a great Christmas present for any boy or girl. And it's only at Texaco, where for fine quality products, trust your car to the man who wears the star.